So, those who try to insist, the, the atheists, that there is no God, they are talking religion. They are not talking science, because science demands and dictates that you only speak about the how, things that you can study in a lab. So, as long as you are in a lab, you can't speak about things that cannot be studied in science. It's like, say, trying to measure the temperature of a person using a ruler. That's a different wrong measure. Or, or measuring your weight using a thermometer, because it's, it's a scale. You have to use the right scale for the measurement of the thing you are measuring. So when a scientist comes to you and he's an atheist to say, uh, scientifically proven that there is no God, or Yuri Gagarin went up into space and he couldn't find God, therefore God does not exist. That's, that's a joke. That's a, a joke. It, it, you can't be serious, man as that tennis player used to use the word. So, opposite to these come the creationists who are trying to defend the Bible. Oh, no, no, everything in the Bible is absolutely, literally correct. If God says he made man from dust or from soil, then it must have been a collection of soil in a second of time or in a very short moment God gathered as if he has hands. We will come to these sort of theologically difficult questions to answer if you take it literal. And that's the symbolism of the story of Adam and Eve is a must. We will discuss this in detail, uh, step by step. So, creationists insist, you either take the Bible absolutely written, six days of creation, six days, 24 hours, yes, times six days. And then they start to say, but things inside it could be symbolic. Uh, they, they agree, and we all agree since the time of the fathers, that the tree of life in the book of Genesis is itself Christ. It is not... Uh, a tree that had a fruit that people were eating and then uh, they can start to come and take the symbolism of other bits in the story but they insist it was absolutely literal therefore if you calculate according to the genealogy of the Old Testament and the uh, 20 centuries after that therefore Adam was a person a definite individual and Eve was a definite individual who lived on this earth around seven to 8,000 years ago, depending on the way they do this calculation. And what about all those fossils and skeletons that date back tens, if not hundreds of thousands of years? Well, they say your carbon fiber uh, irradiation estimation of the age of this organic uh, material of that skull that you discovered, it's all wrong. Even if we assume it is 95% wrong, then we cannot still come that the four million years, the age of man on earth, will go down to any less than 20,000, isn't it? So, we have to accept that the carbon-14 carbon and the other methods of uh, giving, um, uh, studying the age of any organic material must have some accuracy, otherwise scientists would have abandoned them very well. The creationists insist that you have to take things absolutely literal. Let's see what the Bible tells us that they don't want to accept as symbolic and think about it. In this version of the Old and New Testament with the deuterocanonical uh, books, which is the Franciscan Catholic printed Bible in the 1960s, they have an introduction to each chapter and when they come to talk about uh, the book of Genesis, they speak that you can't take the first 11 uh, chapters, which is everything bef before the life of Abraham, to be literal history as we understand history. But it is the type of answers that people 3,000 years ago would have understood from their environment, from the revelation that God gave them through intelligence and through understanding life, how things could have started. And we will discuss that in extreme detail, how they took just the building bricks from other cultures, from other uh, stories of creation that they had around them, just the building bricks, and from it they undid or undone all the uh, old theories and stories, but they used the same building bricks to build the story that we have in the Bible here. Yes, it is the inspiration of God because he helped man to try to work out how he can express a teaching that can teach uh, that generation. In the story here we have the fact that God created everything in order, he created everything in six days, 
and he rested on the seventh day, which somebody says we must therefore still be in the seventh day, or the seventh day is a prophecy in a sense. Uh, but there are other people who say the idea of the seven days was just to confirm the system of the seven days week of the Jewish uh, culture. Uh, but still, the very basic part is God created everything, created everything in order, created everything out of nothing, created everything out of love. And he rejoiced in everything every day of the creation. He looked at what he created and he found that it was good. When he created man and woman, he found that everything he has created was very good, having created the crown of the creation, the human being. Then the story gives us small minute details. Because of these minute details and because of people trying to take it literal, because all the scientific discoveries and talk about evolution and what happened is only 150 years old. So you still have believers who are very conscientious, very genuine believers who believe that unless they stick to the literality of the story of the Bible, they are against God. No, it doesn't have to be. Because as I said, the tree of life has always been described by the fathers of the church as being Christ. So Christ was not a tree, a stem and branches and a fruit, but he is the source of life. He is the one who controls the growth of life. Indeed, all the systems in our body are made of trees. The lung is a tree, the digestive system is a tree, the nervous system is a tree, the vascular system is a tree, all glands are trees. Wherever you have a tree, you have life. Wherever you are talking about life, there is a tree fashion structure somewhere. You have to think about it. That's for scientists to meditate about. It's a lovely, interesting discovery. So the Bible says God created everything out of nothing. Fine. No problem with the uh, evolution uh, theory about that. But the creationists come to the story of Adam and Eve and they have a very sticky point in it, which is if Adam was not a certain specific individual, how can it be that St. Paul says that sin entered the world by one man? And by one man, Jesus Christ, who is the incarnated Son of God, the Word of God, also the death that entered by the sin of one man, Christ took away and put life in its stead. So if sin entered by one man and life entered by one man, then I must take it as Adam has been only a single individual. Otherwise, the verse also mentioned by St. Paul would be wrong. No, sir. In old cultures, they used to speak about my son Israel. Yes, that was the name given to Jacob, the son of Isaac. And Jacob was either Jacob or Israel, but yet the tribe would be called Israel. And the nation now even calls itself Israel. That's the name of a man or a name of a tribe or a name of a group of people. That's how it is. It's, it's, it still happens here in the West where you have the surname of the family and the surname is inherited, it doesn't disappear. You, you become the first name or the first few names and you still have a surname. In the East nowadays, uh, some people call you by one first name, your father one first name, granddad first name, and the series of these three or four names become your name, but you don't have a surname. If you go to places uh, like Arabian people in the desert, they still have the surname by the name of the tribe. So. When he speaks of Adam, you have to appreciate that the word Adam in the first few chapters of the Bible means soil. And if you read in Arabic, you'll understand it better because Adam uh, in Arabic calls Adim al-Ard. Adim means soil. So as if the word Adam means the man soil, Mr. Soil in a sense. And the word Eve means the mother of all life. Or it means also another translation, human beings, because she is the mother of human beings. It's like speaking of the essence of a perfume. Uh, you can say it is uh, whatever oil that is the essence of it. That's the mother of that perfume. So he was called Mr. Soil. She is Mrs. Mother of Every Living or Mrs. Life. Hawa in Arabic means Hayya, means Hayya means alive. So she is the living being, woman. And Mr. Soil, man. It is not a name of an individual. We will continue.